You're watching the news on Bahrain International. I'm Hamid Shaman. The royal court announced that His Majesty King Hamid bin Isa Al Khalifa will be at the forefront of receiving Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan and his accompanying delegation, arriving at the Kingdom of Bahrain this evening. The Turkish President will be on an official visit following an invitation from His Majesty the King. The two sides will review the historic bilateral ties and means of enhancing these relations and developing them at all levels, in addition to discussing the latest regional and international issues as well as mutual interest affairs. Interior Minister Lieutenant General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa launched Safra 1, a transport ship that is capable of carrying out search, rescue and firefighting missions. The launch took place in the presence of the Coast Guard leadership at Bender Dar base. The ship is part of the strategic plan to develop the Coast Guard. Deputy Interior Minister Lieutenant General Adil bin Khalifa Al Fadl, Public Security Chief Major General Tariq bin Hassan Al Hassan, Chairman of the Board of Directors of Esri Sheikh Daij bin Salman Al Khalifa, Interior Ministry Under Secretary Nasser bin Abdurrahman bin Mohammed Al Khalifa and Coast Guard Commander Commodore Ala Siadi received the minister upon his arrival. The Coast Guard Commander delivered a speech in which he expressed thanks and appreciation to the minister for launching Safra 1. He commended the minister's support to the Coast Guard Command through providing boats and the latest technologies and equipment as well as training the human resources. He noted that the Coast Guard has become a force capable of enforcing order and law in the kingdom's territorial waters. During the inauguration ceremony, the minister watched a short film which included the phases of the project which was done in cooperation between Esri and the Coast Guard. The project took 15 months to complete and will enforce the Coast Guard's ability to monitor and control the area. After that, the minister began the inauguration ceremony by raising the flag on the ship. On this occasion, he expressed thanks and appreciation to the Coast Guard's officers, non-commissioned officers and members. He praised their efforts in cooperation and coordination with other security agencies to thwart an attempt to smuggle a number of wanted terrorists on the 9th of February of 2017. The minister asserted the implementation of development strategies in all security authorities so as to develop their competency and abilities. He noted in this regard the system of the Coast Guard, the completion of the security defense project, the advanced marine radars, cameras and checkpoints of the Coast Guard, and its role in protecting the coasts and territorial waters as well as providing a safe marine environment. The minister honored the project's management team, the Safra One crew, and those who participate in the latest security operation. A show of marine formations was then performed. First Deputy Chairman of the Shura Council, Jamal Mohamed Fakhro, chaired today the weekly meeting. The Council celebrated the 16th anniversary of the National Action Charter and the members noted the achievements made during the prosperous era of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa as well as His Majesty's reform project. The Council highlighted the citizens' support to His Majesty's vision of development and reform as is evident through the high percentage of votes endorsing the Charter at a rate of 98.4%. The Council started its session with approving the minutes of the meeting and then approved a draft law regarding the transfer of convicts to Russia. The council concluded by approving a draft law regarding the use of medical technologies to help with fertility. 
Under the patronage of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and in the framework of the World Arabian Horse Organization activities hosted by the Kingdom of Bahrain, the Royal Stables held horse show celebrations in the presence of the Chairman of the Bahrain Royal Equestrian and Endurance Federation, Sheikh Faisal bin Rashid Al Khalifa, Wahoo President Peter Pond, members of the Executive Committee and delegations representatives from different countries. Sheikh Faisal bin Rashid welcomed the delegations and wished them a pleasant stay, praising the efforts of the members of the Wahoo General Assembly while affirming the Kingdom's keenness to meet the wise leadership's aspirations and achieve further success. He conveyed the greetings of His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Salman Al Khalifa, son of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, to the representatives of the delegations affirming His Highness's support to the efforts exerted by Wahoo and aspirations to achieve further progress. The celebration included an Arabian horse show, showcasing the achievements made by Bahrain in the field of breeding Arabian horses while highlighting their features and characteristics. Now and on the sidelines of the World Arabian Horse Organization Conference event hosted by the Kingdom under the patronage of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, the conference's organizing committee held an Arabian horse show in honor of the delegation's representatives from 41 different countries. The president of Fahu Executive Committee, Peter Bond, delivered a speech in which he hailed the efforts of Bahrain in hosting this international event, highlighting His Majesty the King's patronage, which contributed to the success of the conference. He also expressed thanks and appreciation to the high organizing committee committee presided by the deputy chairman of the high organizing committee of the Rashid Equestrian and Endurance Club, son of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Salman Al Khalifa. The Chinese delegation representative also delivered a speech in which he noted Bahraini generosity and the efforts exerted by Wahoo in preserving Arabian horses all around the world. He also highlighted the General Assembly's acceptance of the Chinese request to be a member of the organization. The participants expressed thanks for the Bahraini hospitality, appreciating the role of His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Salman Al Khalifa and his directives that aided the success of the conference. The ceremony included a traditional musical performance. February 14th is a celebration in Bahrain, a date which marks the day when 98.4% of the population voted yes in the referendum on the National Action Charter. The constitutional referendum is considered a cornerstone for promoting the kingdom in all fields, especially that of the economy. More in this report with Mohamed Youssef. February 14 is a day that marked a new chapter for Bahrain. The constitutional referendum is considered the cornerstone for promoting freedoms on the social, economic and political levels. In 2001, Bahraini strongly backed proposals to turn the country into a constitutional monarchy under the prosperous era of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa with an elected parliament and independent judiciary. 98.4% voted yes in the referendum on the National Action Charter. Prior to 1999, the GDP was characterized by sharp fluctuations as the economy struggled to diversify. Bahrain sought to develop its petrochemical and aluminium industries. Bahrain has always focused on diversifying the economy away from oil, and now more than 80% of GDP comes from non-oil sectors. In 2016, according to a report by the Economic Development Board, the Bahraini economy expanded by 3.6% compared to 2.9% in 2015. The public and private sector's investment projects are worth over $32 billion across a number of sectors, including manufacturing, logistics, infrastructure, healthcare, education, and tourism. Bahrain has always experienced freedom and democracy ever since the wise leadership of Al Khalifa assumed the rule of the country. The wise leadership is always keen on contacting, communicating and holding consultations with the people of Bahrain in order to meet their needs, meet their aspirations and provide them with high living standards. The National Action Charter achieved strong economic growth rates despite the financial and oil crisis affecting the world every now and then. Economic experts and business figures affirmed that the National Action Charter contributed to the development of the economic march of the kingdom despite the challenges faced, making Bahrain's economy a model on the freedom, openness, high competitiveness and qualifying national talents levels. The reform project of His Majesty the King and the Economic Vision 2030 supported the National Action Charter with their economic horizons in which they were able to achieve progress, enhance investment and attract more capital. 
the National Action Charter achieved a tremendous number of development, freedom, openness and closeness between the wise leadership of Bahrain and its people, in addition to enhance the kingdom's economy despite the oil crisis. All that comes under the wise vision and efforts of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa to achieve the best for Bahrain and provide high living standards and services for its people. This is Muhammad Yusuf reporting for Bahrain International. Good evening and welcome to the Business News on Bahrain International. I'm Bara Abdallah and let's start with the local stocks. As Bahrain All Share Index has closed at 1,309.31 points, marking an increase of 2.48 points above the previous closing. The increase was in the commercial banks and services sectors, and investors traded mainly in the commercial bank sector, representing 71% of the total value of shares traded. 39 equity transactions took place with a volume of 4,030,098 shares, worth 955,226 Bahraini dinars. The Bahrain Economic Development Board and Euromoney conferences have announced a lineup of leading international and regional industry experts to speak at the 6th annual GCC Financial Forum. Finance Minister Sheikh Ahmed bin Mohammed Al Khalifa will address the forum, which will be hosted in the capital Manama on the February 27th to the 28th. More than 600 high-level delegates will participate and discuss how the GCC region will fund its future. The delegates will have the unique opportunity to participate in open town hall session with Governor of the Central Bank of Bahrain, Rashid Mohammed Al Maraj, in what has now become one of the well-established highlights of the annual forum. The Bahrain Aluminum Alba, in line with its commitment to strengthen its competitive edge in conducting a strategic offsite workshop and next generation leadership program for executive directors and managers. The workshop focuses on leadership through managing change, growth, strategy, execution, agility, talent management, and leadership pipeline. Alba's Chief Executive Officer Tim Murray said that Alba recognizes the importance of developing the next generation of leaders, which becomes even more critical as Alba goes down the path of becoming the largest single-site smelter in the world upon commissioning the Line 6 expansion project. <laughs> 